What is up everybody, welcome back to Case Digital, my name is Zach. In today's video, we are going to basically take this class example that we have and see how we can get all the attributes of, of this Python class. And for example, we're gonna try and create a list that gives us the company zip, company state, and the name. For instance, these are our class uh, attributes and this is our instance variable or attribute. Um, so let's hop right in and start coding. So to get all the attributes or to get all these attributes that we want to get, essentially, essentially all you just need to do is call the built-in dir function on our object. So what we can do is I will just go ahead and I will print this out, print, and we can say dir, and then we'll just give it our object. And we see that if we do this and we print this out, we get this big old nasty list, right? All right call it a nasty list because you get all these things of like these underscore and like what all what is all this well technically these are all the different like built-in methods and or classes or excuse me methods or attributes that this class or this current object i would say because we did it on the object hold now we can for example if we examine this we'll see that there's the add function right there um it's not really an add function and then there's our company state which is a class attribute the company zip which is a class attribute and the name which is an instance variable so that is if we run it on an object. Now, you could also run this on the dir function on your employee class, just the class, not with any, you know, in parentheses or anything. And if we run this, you'll see that the difference here is that we see the add function or method and the company in state. So this is just setting it up for this whole class because basically we run on a class. Every class instance is going to have these, um, um, like it's going to have these attributes here, but it's also going to have this method. So that's why we don't see name in here. So if we wanted to get everything, um, we probably want to go, if we want to get everything for our current object, we probably want to use our object. So E1. And now how do we simplify this? this list so that we're only getting what we did up here where it's just the say company state company zip and company name just the attributes whether they're instance instance variables or instance attributes or the state attributes or the class attributes so to answer our question of how we can just get a list of just our um our class either our class or our instance attributes what we can do is one way to do this is essentially you could use a list right you could loop through it do some checks um and i'll show you the checks that you would need to do um but the other way is to do a nice little using or do a nice little thing using list comprehension and that's kind of what i wanted to show today because essentially list comprehension is just going to create a list as we loop through it and what we're going to do is we're going to check we're going to go through each one of these and check whether or not they're a met, uh, a function or, or whether they're callable meaning they're like a method or something like that like our add method or if they have or if they begin with this double underscore because usually this double underscore is going to in, uh, indicate that um, not always but in most cases it's going to indicate that it's like a it's supposed to be hidden or anything that you don't kind of want to give out to the user and so we're just kind of going to go with that and say that we don't want it to be hidden and we don't want it to be callable so what we can do like i mentioned is we can print um and i'll just do this for now um new list new adders is equal to and we're just going to say the adder so if you're not familiar with list comprehension essentially what this is going to do is i'm going to put the value that i want of, to add to the list on this very outside because i'm going to say um for adder in and then we're going to give it we're going to pass in that dir of e1 so we're going to get this basically this big old nasty list right and now what's nice is here if i ran this this would actually just reproduce this right here because what's happening is we're looping through each variable so like for instance if we go through the first value we'll get class and it's just going to put it when it's on this side of it it's going to basically add that to this list that we're creating with these boundaries um, so if i ran this just as is we would see the exact same thing um, but that's not what we want. We want to do, we want to add an if condition. Now, if you do a bunch of if, like if you want to do an if else in here, it's a kind of a slightly different syntax. Um, and I'll show that in a later video. But for today, we're basically just going to show like if you just had an if. So that usually goes, if you just have one if, you put it on this side, which means if it's true or whatever, if it matches your uh, case that you're looking for. So in our case, we want to say if it's not callable, it's a nice little callable function. And we're going to give it the um, has adder, or no, no, get adder sorry get adder of our e1 of our of our uh, class or i mean of our object and then the attribute that we're using that we're evaluating and that is currently at this time as we're going through it is the variable of adder so what this is basically going to do is like use this get adder function in python that basically will check whether or not um, a class or an object in our case we're using the object has the string version which all these are coming out of strings 
of whatever whatever you think the attribute is called. Now, in our case, we know we're getting all the attributes, so we know it's an actually attribute. But then we're going to pass that information into the um, callable function. And the callable function, all it really does here, as it says, is it returns whether or not the object is callable, i.e. some kind of function or whatnot. So like this is going to reduce all the things that um, essentially are not um, like your methods or functions like that. So if we run this as is, we can go print. I'm going to do my nice little like thing here to give us a new line. I'm going to say print new adders. Now, if we run this, we see that here is everything that is not callable, that is not a function. Um, but you can see that we're still left over with some things that start with an underscore, like a dictionary. Now, this will basically give us all of our instance attributes, if we call that, or our documentation, or the module information, weak reference. But then look, this is the information that we wanted. We wanted it to say uh, the company state. So here's our class attributes. And then here is our instance attribute, right? So how do we get rid of that? Well, we can just add to our if statement. Or I can loop through um, adders again using list comprehension um, and remove all the stuff that begins with or starts with uh, the double underscore. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say right here in our if I'm going to add to this and say and not adder dot starts with and then I'm going to say double underscore. Now, if I run this again, you should see that we should just be left with um, company state, company zip and name. Now, if we run it again. And we see just like that, we're left with just company state, company zip, and company name. Um, you could do this exact same thing using um, a for loop and build up a list. For example, um, this is using the list comprehension method. And sometimes list comprehension is the way to go. But as you can see in this case, maybe it's not because you know we want our code not only to be um, efficient, which list comprehension is pretty efficient, but we also want it to be readable, right? Because if I walk away from this from six months from now, and then I come back, I'm going to have to be like, well, what the heck is going on here, right? You know, I, I need to be able to understand. Um, so if this is a little bit too confusing for you to see what's going on, always you can take a list comprehension thing and rewrite it um, as a um, as a just a normal uh, for loop. And so I'm going to say new adders is equal to this, an empty list. I'm going to say for um, adder in dir of e1. And then we go like that. And now we're going to say if adder, um, or excuse me, I'm going to say callable, say if it's callable, or well, we don't want it to be callable. We want to say not callable. And I'm going to pass it to get adder and then say e1 and the, the string representation of the adder, which is just going to be adder or the attribute, which is going to be adder. And I can say that if it's not callable, then we can go in here and then we can say we can either do it on the same line. So like just like we did before and not adder dot starts with double underscore. We do this. We could just say new adders dot append adder. Now if I come down here and say round two, right? And so just like this, um, we can print this out. And round two gives us the exact same result as round one. Again, you could also do something like this and just nest it even further. It should give us the exact same result, and it does. However, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, obviously, I've showed you two different methods. I gave you the list comprehension way, which looks really cool, like one line of code. But also, we want we also want to go with readability when we write code, and not just I can sling code and it works. We want to do read have it be readable and know that everything is working just fine. Um, um, but we also, you know, don't want to get to the point where like you don't always need to nest things out. Like for this case, like for instance, if I were going to do it this way, I'd honestly Honestly, do something like this um, and just say an and right here because you want to say do this and this meaning that if this part fails it's just gonna skip out and go to the next um, or if, if it this part passes and this part fails then it's not gonna be an attribute so I hope you found this useful if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and until next time keep on programming Bye.